Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 221, October 6th. Is this the final quarter? I think this is the final quarter of the year. Seventh. Seventh? Oh, seventh. seventh. Holy cow, what was I doing here? We're gonna, uh, I'll fix it later. We'll fix it in post. No, wait, I can't do that. Anyway, uh, it is October 7th. Ignore the numbers on the screen. Um, actually, it's going to bug me, so let's do ah, all the way to the top. Look. You get to see how sausage is made, yeah. You knew this was a sl slide, right? Everybody knew this was a PowerPoint? No, if you didn't, you know now. October 7th, I think I put the notes together yesterday, and that's my massive failing as a human being. I cannot translate time from my current position, it seems. It's very, very weak. At that you point. really should procrastinate, I think, is the lesson learned. <laughs> <laughs> um, as always, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. Uh, let's talk about what we're going to talk about. Uh, Jacob's here. It's great to see you, Jacob. Um, we're going to do triage because we always do triage. Um, I think we always do triage. We pretty much always do triage. Got to stay on top of the bugs, especially since we are on top of them. So we'll stay on top of them. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the .NET Foundation update. It's very possible many of you have not been following along. This has kind of been a Twitter thing that exploded over the last mm, few days, started the, this last weekend. But uh, for those of you that have seen it, I want to give you an update on what it means for us in the Wix toolset and where we're going. The, the story's not done, so you're going to get an update somewhere in the middle of it. And then we'll always do questions and comments. Uh, there may be a lot of questions and comments uh, given the topics at hand, but the first thing we're going to do is triage. Bob, you ready? I am ready. All right. Uh, tag your eight. You got the first two. Um, are we skipping those as we have the last two, or any updates you want we'll to give? Skip the f I, we we can skip them. I, I'm I have not yet committed to uh, doing the work in six five four five. Porta. Um, yep. I, Briefly investigated and need to investigate some more. Um, okay. To, so. Excellent. Yeah. All right. We will revisit in two weeks, I'm sure, because we'll still be here. Unless it's gone. No, it's something. Um, it's unable, unable to build after updating the version 3.14.04.11.18. So we broke something. Yeah. Well, we didn't. Um, uh, this was originally a bug. It became a discussion. Um, and the issue we would look at next is a duplicate of this. Okay. Um, it is appears to be a problem in the cubs that we ship in 314. But we didn't change them, did we? We did. Oh. I don't remember that. I don't either. But they're different. And they're binary. How sad. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, the, well, we've had this problem. Okay, well, I guess we need to keep Related this problem. Yeah, we need to keep this in 314, definitely, and uh, we'll roll it out with the next update. I, and this came in, this came in after we just did that ARM stuff, huh? The updates for ARM for Windows 11? Well, this is the first time yeah. it's gotten to triage. I see. Sad. Should we just revert the cubes? Um, yeah, I I think so. Um, we sh we should, you know, do a little bit of investigation to see, yeah, yeah. when they came in, yeah. um, because it looks it <laughs> uh, it looks like the um, uh, three fourteen has newer cubs than four. Yeah. Um, that that which, wouldn't. Would completely surprise yeah. me, especially since right. I didn't think they were being updated anymore. So, yeah, this is all, all very interesting, um, unexpected, I'd say. So, yeah, unfortunately, it's my fault. Oh, bummer. Um. Uh, yeah, I updated the the cubes as part of the ARM64 work because they gave us ARM64 cubes or something. Probably, right? Yes. Probably so needed now, to change. Well, yeah, that makes sense. We had to change something so ARM would be allowed. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is an annoying issue, isn't it? Um, yeah, the old cubes might not 
I might throw warnings on ARM64 packages. All right. Well, it's it's a logical. It's it's all logical now. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know where we go with this. Um, it does appear that the problem is specific to the merge mod cube. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, M10, so that's. So it'd be interesting to see. I mean, obviously. I mean, I this could imagine. be us, right? We could have a product code. Could we have added a product code? No. Oh, no. Okay. Is there a product code no, in the cube? No, I originally moved it to a discussion because pff, this couldn't possibly be a real bug. Um, and then I went and actually checked and Yeah. Yeah, there is no product code in the merge module, but nonetheless. Okay. ISOM 10 is complaining about it. So since you're already overloaded, Bob, should we just give you more? I, 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 sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's absolutely. Hey, Ron. Thanks for being here. I was going to say thanks for making roll call, but we just did that in the last page. But we're very happy to see you here. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're, uh, yeah. Yep. Whenever we talk about push. another 314 build, somebody remember to remind me that this needs to be in it. <laughs> um, all right. Empty merge module fails to compile. This is a dupe of that. Yes. All right. That totally makes sense. Oh, it's the same person. Okay. Um, Wix size extension should not grant a just memory quota for a process. Uh, that's fascinating that the custom action, I don't know that it does. It probably just uh, doesn't do anything for it. So I'm um, curious. I, I I mean I admit I don't understand um the interaction here between IIS and the user, but is this is this a problem of the of the user assigned to the app pool or is it only for the standard the built in I don't know, pseudo users? I think it's a setting on the app pool. Huh, okay. That then if you set it it's or it's a permission. Yeah, I think it maybe it's a permission that the app pool can have and if you then set it to somebody that's in the app pool, well then they can change their memory on you. Which Well so then it'd be a but it's a user permit. I mean sorry, I again I'm not sure just how deep IIS gets its tendrils in, but permissions are, are for users right no it's i think it's a it's a permission on the app pool that users can have i, I don't exactly know how it's implemented because is does their okay. own thing so i i doubt right, right i would be surprised if it's all like sid based all the way down that kind of stuff um you know, primitives like os primitives i i my expectation is some setting on an app pool that you can say yes allow the um memory quota to be controlled by the people in the process and i as I understand it, the problem here is that, well, if you don't trust the things you're putting in that app sure, tool, sure. which you do sometimes, then by letting them have this thing set, then they can change their memory and, of course, yeah. eat the memory on the machine, and that's not desirable. And so somewhere in the custom action, probably there's something either have to do, probably would have to do explicitly to not set this. But also there's an extreme right. amount of inheritance in IS, so it's possible they set this at the next level up and we're just inheriting it, and the complaint here is that we shouldn't set it by default, or the custom action should be extended to support setting all of these different settings on an app pool. I'm sure someone would like us to do that, or someone could do that. And I think all of these things would be good, and someone that wants to dig into IS extensions should go dig into it to make it more um, flexible for all of these situations. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, ooh, yeah, that's kind of, I guess we, uh, if if we do this by, if we reverse the default, then some people are going to be locked out of being able to use this permission. Uh, yeah, and then you have to be able to control it and then be able to add it all back. Yeah, I mean, right, there's, right. there's this is not a, just, yeah, you have to think through the problem. You're right, yes. First, verify whether it's custom action, right? Because this could be a setting... And it 
could be, I don't know, there could be an inheritance as well, because IS does lots of inheritance, mm -hmm. where they set this somewhere higher, didn't realize it's set higher, and the reason nobody's ever complained about this before is because it's never set normally, and it's just this particular configuration that these guys hit. Or it's always been setting this, and nobody's noticed because they don't care because people are putting their own stuff in their own Apple. Right, right. And, and they would just be, you know, blowing up themselves. So, I mean, the issue here is that, yeah, IS probably, or the IS custom action, if it is doing this, probably should not be used to uh, create app pools for untrusted code. I think that's probably the, the bug right now. It's like, yeah, someone could make it handle that scenario better. It would be great. I'm not signing up to do that anytime soon. So. No, IS, bad and scary. Um, are yeah. we, would this be a 4X thing? Sounds additive. Yeah, I, I would do it. Well, well it, would, it, yeah. it would have to be, if we, if it's made additive, then it could be, it could go into 4X. Yeah. Okay. It, yeah, it, I mean, someone wants to go dig into this and make it well work in 4X, I'm all for it. Be like, yeah, fantastic. But like Jacob said, you know, it's IS. It's like, I, I avoid using IS like the plague now. So just massively massive system that I don't like dealing with. That's me personally as a technology choice. Now you don't have to. Yeah, I mean, you know, .NET Core and Kestrel has really changed the way that I approach this. But even before that, I I rather work with HTTP Sys most of the time than IS. But again, it's the kind of stuff I do. I don't need IS. I don't need all the hosting. And you know, I mean, oh, there's a gazillion features in IS that I'm like, oh, yeah, not my thing. Which just, I'm Sorry, I'm just pontificating on my lack of interest in IS. <laughs> That's all it comes down to. So, um, someone that has more interest in IS should jump in, and this would be a fantastic thing for them to go look at. Enforcing code integrity check. Now, this is uh, one that came up before. Oh, okay. And this is apparently a request to reconsider. Um, we marked that one suspended. Sure. Which means we're not doing it. Someone else could. Yeah. But it's also closed because we marked it suspend. So. Well, I looked at their link and it's not like the link is all about your program downloading code and then running that code you downloaded. Yeah. So their link doesn't even really apply to this code integrity check that they're asking for. Right. I agree. Oh, fascinating. Um, it's, it's yeah. so, uh, you know, the, the, the discussion on the other issue was, you know, it's like, well, this is just a bit, it doesn't seem very interesting given other technologies that Microsoft has introduced. Um, yeah, you can already through group policy require, you know, code to be signed to be executed, um, which is why we said, you know, this is just a bit. It doesn't seem very interesting. Um, and I agree that, you know, the the link was not interesting. I don't think anything's changed. We're not um, against no, it. No. I mean, if if this person wants to do the work, then then there's a lot of work to go forth and make it happen, right? It's right. you can't just set the bit because it forces everybody to sign it. Well, clearly we're not going to do that. So yeah. now you have to maintain the current behavior, but you can make this additive. It's going to be a lot of work and we're going to have to make sure it doesn't blow up the build matrix. I mean, there's going to be a lot of things to walk through on this, but yeah. Yeah. Which is why the old issue is marked with required. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm fine if we reopen the issue just to make it look less. I, know, all right. Final. So I think that is, we need to take the signal that, um, uh, that we shouldn't close these things, these issues, because people are going to think they're not, available anymore. Maybe that's yeah. the feedback yeah. we have to think about. I don't like them just floating around either. So yeah. maybe we just need to close them clearly. I don't know. 
we, we've said this several times, we need to go back and really l nail down what we're doing with our old issues and suspended issues and yeah. respawn issues. We just need to go nail that down, make it clear. Then we would have duped this to that document that said, hey, <laughs> there already is a bug open that talks about this. It's closed, but it's marked suspend, which means someone could open it, yada, yada. And that document would explain the whole thing. And they'd be like, oh, right. well, then I need to go unsuspend it, don't I? And the answer would be, Yes, if you want it implemented, you need to go figure out how to get someone yourself or someone else interested in solving your problem. We just need right. to do that. So we need to do that. All right. This is the same. Yep. Then. Okay. Great. Um, yeah. We didn't say you're wrong. We just said that we're not interested in doing all that work ourselves right now. Right. And thank you for making us aware of it, I guess, but if it's not going to become the standard that everybody has to follow, probably not going to bother doing that. Yep. Okay. I think we're at the end. I agree. Yay. It's nice not having pages and pages to go to. Um, all right. Time for everybody else's sit back, I have to tell a story now, um, a story of the last month or so, month and a half or so of things that have been going on that uh, weren't terribly interesting until this weekend and the last couple of days in particular. Uh, to tell this story, I'm going, I have to go back, I want to go back to the very beginning. Um, about our interactions with the .NET Foundation and where we've been and where we've where things have kind of gone. So the Wix toolset joined the .NET uh, Foundation because Outer Curve was it was was dying. It was no it was not going. It was no longer manned by anybody, and it wasn't exactly clear where the organization was going. And this is important to the Wix toolset because at that time the Outer Curve owned the the copyright for the Wix toolset. And with the Outer Curve Foundation, it, it was unclear if some other company was going to buy it or what exactly was going on. But there was a very real possibility that some other entity that had absolutely nothing to do with open source and the Wix tool set and any of our history would buy the copyright and then could essentially do anything to the Wix tool set from that point on. Um, and so that wasn't a great place. So we needed to find a new home. Um, and the .NET Foundation uh, was newish at that time um, and was looking you know, for member projects. So we had a couple of requirements, technology things, like we brought up the signing certificate um, and we had the CLA thing, which they were already kind of on. Um, and so they had to get some technology, but the, the executive director at the time, his name is Martin Woodward, um, was was very open about here's what we can do here's what we can uh, will do um, here's all the things you uh, can work that will work with you on and it was um, very productive and he even said maybe there's going to be some future things that if you know the .NET Foundation grows and continues to be successful maybe there's like conferences and the Wix toolset could speak at conferences well they do not have .NET Conf so hey I guess that happened but you know a lot of those things didn't work out for us. But it was like, okay. But the important part was that we could move into a foundation that should uh, be able to hold the copyright. And again, Microsoft was still related to it, so it should be stable. And it is of the uh, history and the places that we live in, right? This is the ecosystem we live in. Um, so they did that work. And, and then we moved over. And it was fine. Uh, in 2017, Martin moved off to get another job, which is fine. Yep, he wanted to go do something different, which is cool. Um, but that was kind of the beginning of the radio silence from the .NET Foundation. Um, not that there was a lot that, uh, even when Martin there, that they would send to us, but it felt like there was kind of two-way communication that things would happen. We could ask them, they would fix things. Um, you know, we'd say, hey, this, we need to fix the CLA bot, and they would give us instructions how to go about doing that so we could fix it. That was great. Um, when we had requests into the .NET Foundation, uh, it, I had to calculate that it would take usually about three to six months before they would respond. Um, and sometimes they would resolve it right that moment, and sometimes they'd be like, oh, sorry, what was this about? And, and then you could sometimes reset the clock. So we had some really slow turnarounds on things. But 
there weren't many issues uh, that were popping up. So it wasn't a big deal, but the .NET Foundation really kind of became not uh, a part of our life. Like I know we're a member of .NET Foundation. They asked us from the very beginning to put their name on the, you know, the site, stuff like that. That's, that's fine, right? We're a member. We'll say that. It's all good. Um, in 2019, uh, they rolled out this maturity model thing that I don't know where it started. It was a lot of it came from Microsoft, and they were trying to come up with a way of stating to uh, other entities, I think mostly enterprises, that this open source is good. It's stable. It's uh, I don't know. It's it's safe. I, I, I don't, they were trying to make statements around that. And so through the .NET Foundation, they were trying to put together a list of requirements that a project would meet and have different levels of compatibility or compliance within this maturity model that then enterprises could look at and say, oh, well, that's maturity level you know, 2000, therefore it must be a good project. Oh, that's maturity level five, it must not be a good project, I shouldn't use it. And the problem came in that they designed all these rules and everything, but the work all fell to the project maintainers of all the various projects in the .NET Foundation to do work. And some of it was significant amounts of work to meet this maturity level. And they're like, well, it's optional. And I didn't get deeply involved, but I did point out that it's not optional if you're going to tell other customers that a project isn't good until it meets all these things. That essentially makes it required. And anyway, it, it got significant um, pushback from project maintainers. I didn't get deeply involved in it um, because honestly, we're we're pretty confident in what we're able to do in the Wix toolset. We've been doing this for a really long time. Uh, we have things we can improve, but you know, we, we know how to get things going when you know, and how to solve problems. So that wasn't it. But it did lar start leaning to some grumbling amongst project maintainers that maybe the .NET Foundation wasn't really there to help projects. It was there to help something else, but it was never really clear. And again, this is just kind of grumbling. And I, I don't, I did not communicate much with the other, pro other project maintainers in the .NET Foundation. They didn't really put together a system to do that. And it, it, I don't know, it never really occurred to me how to communicate with other people in the projects. I admired a lot of the other projects that were going on out there. There's a number of really interesting things in the .NET Foundation that people not related to Microsoft or anything have done, and I've been impressed by them. So it's like, yeah, that's cool. The problem started in August when we were told, uh, when I got an email saying that the .NET Foundation, that the Wix toolset was out of compliance with the .NET Foundation's new code of conduct rules that they had just passed. Um, the code of conduct came about because I think the .NET project, so actually .NET Core and all that stuff, has lots of people and has had, and being very, very large, has had some set of people that are not behaving well, um, not communicating well in their things. And so they have various timeouts and bans, much like Twitch does for random people showing up and saying bad things, in our case, mostly bots. But, um, and so this code of conduct was their attempt to uh, push this, uh, um, evaluation system and banning and all that to all the projects so they would all benefit from someone getting banned in .NET Foundation and then they would not show up in like, for example, the Wix tool set, which wasn't something I was particularly interested in in any way, shape, or form because someone behaving badly in .NET may not be behaving, behaving badly in the Wix tool set or whatever. It, it just wasn't anything I was in, in interested in. And I think we've done a pretty good job of keeping the mailing lists and people civil, right? We have debates, we have conversations, and if we have things, we work through them to get to the other side. I dealt with trolls when Wix toolset was first launched, a lot of them, and I've learned from that stuff. So I felt like, you know, we'll do the code of conduct, right? The list of things that people have to behave and how they need to interact with online, that's all good. People should be civil. I'm fine for having those rules written down. That's good. But actually having a system 
enforce it in the project I was less interested in. And the fact that it required the .NET Foundation um, to be added to the Wix toolset as an owner of the project, I was not, that really set me off because the people that have ownership of the project are myself, Bob, and Sean. And I think the reasons that the three of us have ownership of the um, project is obvious. We all work on the project <laughs> a lot. Like we take care of the maintenance and all the things in the project and care deeply. The .NET Foundation is a collection of people I don't even know whose board of members is elected, whose executive director we don't have any say in. All of that says we're going to have some other person that isn't people that are contributing directly to the Wix toolset part of our community doing things, able to do anything to the project, including deleting it mo and modifying and blowing up um, the uh, blowing up the issues and things like that. So I was, and, and then I was on a deadline uh, at Fire Giant. We had a deadline at the end of September. This hit in August, and I was like, I'm I'm not dealing with this right now. Um, but by towards the end of September, when everything was going well, I responded and said, uh, we appreciate the code of conduct. We will definitely make sure that we follow those rules, that people behave well um, on our particular things, so the Wix tool set doesn't, isn't, doesn't become a place where, a part of the .NET Foundation where people say, well, that's where the trolls live. We won't become that. It's like, we definitely, you know, code of conduct, we'll line up with all that. But I don't trust the .NET Foundation enough to add them as an owner of our project. I mean, it's just, that's not going to happen uh, here. <laughs> and so then uh, the, it's certainly not for enforcing these sorts of things. So I got a mail back saying, well, you have to, because that's what the .NET Foundation policy says. Now, if you go back to the beginning, when we joined the .NET Foundation, that certainly was not the policy, because when uh, the one thing we have is the CLA bot from the .NET Foundation is added, has write permissions on the, the project so that it could maintain and manipulate PRs to essentially get people to say, hey, thank you for the PR, you need to sign the CLA. That's a nice thing, that was, that was good. And when we set that up, uh, the executive director, Martin at that time, said, we can do this for you if you give us access to your repo temporarily, or you can do the work and we can send you the instructions. And I honestly don't know which we picked. I think we said, you know what, that's fine. Why don't you guys come in, set it up real quick, and they'll go on. Because I was doing a lot of work at the time to get the announcement in place that the Wix tool says, join .NET Foundation, going through modifying all the copyright headers, you know, just overhead stuff that you have to do um, as part of project maintenance. So that's the policies that I've been part of. The .NET Foundation is here to support you, not to dictate a set of rules that that aren't necessarily about making your project better. It's like you must allow us to be an admin of your project. It's like, no, we we don't need to do that. We have operated since 2016, so that's five years here, and we've been open source since. 2004 without any such things. So no, we're not doing that. Um, especially not this way, not communicated this way. None of this is um, just not the way to approach the problem is where I was at. Um, and honestly, I just, it wasn't a big enough deal to deal with it more than that. I was just like, no. Now, um, we hit a problem though, Sean, I think Sean pointed out, yeah, Sean pointed out, one of our CLL bots wasn't working in one of the repos and that repo was getting pull requests so we needed it to work. Uh, and so he tried to fix it, we couldn't get it fixed. So um, in my exasperation, I was like, fine, we'll add the .NET Foundation admin to the project so they can fix the CLI bot and then we'll remove them which is the exact same way that we got the .NET Foundation added, or the, the CLA bot added to the Wix tool set a very long time ago. And, and so I had a lot of trepidation, but I also was like, I don't want to keep the system blocked just based on trepidation. Um, and so we did that and the CLA bot was fixed, I don't know, within a week or so. That would have been, I think we noticed that at the end of September. So that was just last week, end of last week. So over the weekend, there's a couple 
missteps that the DNF, that the .NET Foundation did. Um, the first thing that came out was that uh, the new board of a, uh, a new board was elected recently, and as part of that announcement, they announced that one of the previous board members had left, and they they made it they they had this thing like you know so and so is t is leaving the the foundation or the is you know vacating their board position their position to t take more time personal time and it's the sort of thing that when you hear it you're like oh that person got fired right it's like what the CEO happens when you're like oh that CEO got fired or something was wrong or something it was weird right and and a lot of people thought it was weird and it was so weird that the person that was named actually felt required to write a blog entry that basically came back and said, look, I'm fine. Everything's fine. I didn't expect them to even talk about me. I just left. I left for reasons of my own and what I've done in the .NET Foundation's work and all that. It's just, he was like, it's just, he was done. It was very strange. Um, but honestly, whatever. <laughs> it was like minor little piece of drama that I wasn't involved in, but it's like, okay, they'll sort it out. Hopefully someone calls them up. So sorry, you know, we probably shouldn't have said that. It's all good, guys. Like, no problem. We move on. The next problem was that the director of the .NET um, Foundation had, who was a member of a project that's in the .NET Foundation, um, force pushed a change that did not follow that project's standard procedures into the project. Essentially, she wanted this particular feature implemented or thing done, and so uh, rather than continue to work through all of the things that you have to work through on a pull request with the maintainers because she was a maintainer since you know a few years ago and still was a maintainer on the project. Uh, she was able to just force it through. And of course, that got a lot of people's attention. You just don't do that. So um, that started a round of people going, all right, you don't do that. And again, I'm like, yeah, you don't do that. You should apologize for doing that, right? Don't Just don't do those sorts of things. It, just don't, right? Um, so the the thing that came from that, though, is that the member of that project wrote a blog post that kind of said, here's kind of what's going on. And by the way, we recently tried to make some changes to our project, and we couldn't because we found out that we were part of a GitHub, the .NET Foundation's GitHub enterprise, which was just strange to me. I'd never heard of this. And I never would have heard of any of this if this pull request thing hadn't gone on, things like that. And so I looked at the, I read into it, and it turns out there is a way of having, there's GitHub, GitHub Enterprise and there's GitHub Enterprise Server. GitHub Enterprise Server is where you can take essentially the GitHub and run it on your own computers locally within your own firewall and not um, and, and so you can, well, you, and not connect to the internet, right? You can run GitHub privately, it probably costs a lot of money. Great. Enterprises can do that. There's also this thing called GitHub Enterprise, which is a, the ability to pay for your own space in GitHub that is uh, independent of what, I, I don't have a better name, but what I've called public GitHub. So there's public GitHub, which is all the things that you see. Then you can have a organization can pay to have GitHub Enterprise, and then they can put their own orgs and repos inside that and maintain all the control of everything in it, which when you think about it makes sense. If you're a very large company and you have lots of things that are your projects, you want to put up a whole bunch of systems in place that make them all adhere to your set of controls and whatever you're going to do. And what had became clear from this um, uh, um, post is that they had been moved into the .NET Foundation's GitHub enterprise, but they didn't know that that had happened to them. Um, and as so doing, they no longer could control certain parts of their organization and their repos because it was owned by the .NET Foundation's um, enterprise uh, uh, um, selection. So I was like, that's really strange how could they have done that? And I'm like, oh, well, they were probably admins on the project. Now, at this time, some other people are really getting upset that the .NET Foundation would have ever done this. Um, and I'm kind of learning different projects. And one of the projects is like, yeah, that happens and it happened to us. And I'm like, yeah, to have that happen, they'd have to have admin privileges. And then I paused. 
And I went and looked, and I found that the Wix toolset was now part of the .NET Foundation's GitHub Enterprise. And we hadn't been before. And it's a, <laughs> and I was, I was, um, <laughs> even sitting here, I'm feeling it again. I, this was Wednesday, Tuesday afternoon. I was beyond angry. Um, I, I, I really didn't even know what to do. I was frozen for probably 20 minutes just staring at the screen, not able to believe that they would do this, that they would move the project to take control over it, especially since not more than two weeks ago, I had explicitly stated that I did not trust them to have admin access to our project. So it wasn't like this could be a, <laughs> a mistake. They're like, you know, we probably should talk to these guys about this sort of thing. But they didn't. So I was uh, mad. And it went out on Twitter. There's been lots of other projects that then at the same time have figured out that this has happened to them. So in that 20 minutes, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. And I realized after a little bit of thinking, <laughs> can I, do I have to like pull all the, the, pull all the repos and then publish them to a new organization and recreate all that? Then I was like, but we have all the issues, the 900 and whatever issues we have and history and all those issues. I'd have to replicate all of that which I've done in the past because we've moved from other bug trackers to the GitHub tracker, and I did all that. And I was like, I, I can't, I, I, we can't be here. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to figure out what happened. I just couldn't imagine it. So I, I then remembered some random things I'd found, and it turned, I remembered that you could transfer projects across organizations. And so I created another organization temporarily, and I transferred one of the projects of the Wix toolset to that organization. That organiza the new organization lived in public GitHub and the organization not in the .NET Foundation project. So I created I can't create organizations in, .NET, in the .NET Foundation GitHub enterprise. So I created one in the public one, and I was able to transfer uh, the, the project over. Um, I called up Bob, this is five, five, something like that. And I said, I think I'm doing this. And so then Bob watched me do the work to make sure I didn't make any mistakes of transferring all the projects out of the .NET Foundation's enterprises project, or um, uh, enterprise, it have an enterprise, it doesn't have a name, like it's the area. I then renamed, oh, no account, whatever it's called, it, it's more than an account. I renamed the Wix toolset repo to the DNF Wix toolset, and then I renamed my temporary project to Wix toolset. That was the scariest part, because GitHub will create redirects for you for your old name to the new name for a while, um, but if a new project comes in, it's supposed to break those uh, redirects. I was praying and hoping that would work, and if you've been able to do pull requests and things like that, um, it's all, it's all worked. So, um, the Wix tool set is back on public GitHub. The migration from the GitHub enterprise was successful with a minimal disruption. There may be other things we find, but so far these are the only two things we've seen. One, the builds are not reporting their status back to our found, back to our, our projects correctly. They're just not reporting status. Um, so somehow in this move, something got disconnected between the builds and the reporting, and that I, I'm actually amazed that the triggering of the builds kept working without any changes. So we'll, we'll fix that. Uh, I need to go spend some time and just fix, reconnect the things that did this. Um, the the next thing is that the CLA bot is not enabled, for obvious reasons. Um, we will. Uh, Re-enable it. I, one of the things I had evaluated is that you can now run a CLA bot as just a GitHub action in your own repo, which means you don't have to have outside access and all those kinds of things. It does mean that probably everybody's going to get re-prompted to um, uh, set their uh, 
CLAs again and get that all put together. Um, I think that's it right now. So at this point, we're essentially where we were with a couple broken things that I will fix um, soon, as soon as I get a chance to breathe um, and get past all this. Um, I've been communicating a lot with the other project. So uh, let me stop there for a minute. That's the current state. Everything is back the way it was beforehand. Um, and the disruption hopefully was minimal and nobody has um, been impacted besides me doing a lot of work here that I did not anticipate doing. That's our current state. What's going on next? Um, going to continue to monitor what's going on here. There is a significant amount of communication happening with the, um, the other project maintainers um, on the discussion where the apology was sent for the um, for the whole pushing of the PR thing, and then a declaration that we are taking we are adding these new policies to your projects and all that, which is actually where the majority of the project maintainers have issues. The fact that they move to GitHub Enterprise and all that kind of stuff. There was no statement in there. By the way, we did this behind your back, which is the only way that I can describe it. Is that <laughs> especially in our case, when I explicitly told them I don't want them as an admin, they they did work to make that happen, which is still, I'm still so angry about that. I, I've had a number of people ask me, has the .NET Foundation reached out to you? And the answer is no. I haven't really talked to anybody from the .NET Foundation since Martin was there back in 2017. So um, there's there's a it's I, I I'm I'm waiting to see what they choose to do there. I am also communicating with the other project maintainers that continue to work through all the implications to their projects, and we're going to see what happens. That the big thing is to work towards a long-term solution. Uh, the goal is to minimize the impact on the Wix project. We've had some impact through this. The goal will to not have things that are massively different and stuff like that, <laughs> like beyond kind of what we've seen so far, and then to develop a dialogue with the .NET Foundation, which honestly I probably should have been working harder at through all of this, but the response times in three to six months, I kind of gave up, and maybe I shouldn't have. So... We, we have to not get in a situation again where this 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 act this particular way of executing these sorts of things is like acceptable i just i don't want to go through this ever again um so there's still a lot of questions about what can and cannot be done chris is bringing up that they own the copyright which is correct if they don't own the um it's not clear that they own the projects and all the things that have gone there what they did is exactly like a move where enterprise IT says, I claim your machines and I have moved them into a standard. Well, I will um, enforce the standards of the overall um, organization to you, which is fine from an IT point of view when you have an employment contract with that company. You kind of sign up for that. The, that's the company. In the .NET Foundation, the relationship is not at all like that. They don't own us. They don't own our work that we do, that we choose to do. Now, they do own the result of that work and the copyright of that. Yes, we have assigned the, through the copy, through the, the CLA, you do assign them uh, rights to it so that you as a developer cannot turn around and sue them. That's the purpose of it. You can't put a patent infringing thing in there and then turn around and sue them for your act of doing that. That's what they're protecting themselves against from. Um, and so we're going to have, and then, so they, so we're going to have conversations. I don't really know where it's going. I've not been impressed with the .NET Foundation's response at this time. It admittedly came at a rough time for them. They had a set of board members just rotate 
like as we discussed, they just rotated at the end of the year, a month, or last month that was. So they're they're in a bit of a mess, but they're not also coming out and saying, you know, they didn't come out and say, sorry, um, let us. You know, I'm gonna say sorry. Just say, hey, we hear you. Let let's get together and talk about this. Um, I've asked other project maintainers. Not I don't know that any of them have been contacted by .NET Foundation. So they've .NET Foundation instead seems to have gone into a shields up mode, and we got to protect damage, protect the system, which is definitely one way of responding to an issue. But that kind of response is the same thing that we've been getting from them over years, and I'm I I don't know what I I don't know where they. <laughs> I don't know where they're going, where they're coming from. I don't know why all this happened. I am prepared to expect that this was a massive misunderstanding, that someone was believed that they were well-intentioned trying to enact code conducts, which is a very important thing to somebody or something. I, I'm projecting here. I don't know. But I, I'm not attributing malice. I don't think that someone went out there and said, wahaha, I'm going to take over the Wix tool set, put it in the .NET Foundation's GitHub Enterprise, and control it from here. Remove the current owners, kick everybody out, and productize, change the license, change everything, because I own the copyright, mwahaha, yay. I, I don't believe any of that. At the same time, the lack of respect and acknowledgement that the work is done by the people here, and here, all of you that are in this chat even, have all contributed to the Wix tool set. The lack of respect and just dismissal that all these people need to at least be aware of what's going on and why and have some say in it is important. And I, the .NET Foundation that I signed up into was helping me solve problems, legal problems, uh, mostly legal problems. We have, and the signing certificate has been a good service for us to use. Um, and without having to give up more than that. And that's been a completely amicable situation, even if the response time is three to six months on things. So um, the, the, as long as you have a fork and can audit the changes coming in and why it matters. So why does this matter? It, it's, it's a betrayal of trust to the point at which you're like, does it matter that we're in that enterprise? I don't know. I don't know all the things that they can do in it. But the fact that they did it after I asked them not to means that I don't know what they do next. Right? So it's not this move alone that matters. It's the next move that moves. It's the next .NET Foundation policy that they decide that we must implement and take over it. No, they can't take the project. They can't make us work on the project, Chris. They can take the code and they can do whatever they want. They can print it out and put it on their coffee table, admire it. They can do all those things, but they can't make us continue to work on it. And if they're going to move it into a place where we can't trust them, which is what they, after we don't trust them, then I'm not confident I'm going to continue to work on it there. Because we can go work on the Wix tool set elsewhere. I mean, we could go to the extreme and move it to Bitbucket um, and run the project there. That is, we absolutely could do that. Now, we have to publish all the changes in accordance with the license and all those kinds of things, which honestly, I'm happy to do. I've always been happy to do. That's one of the reasons I think I like the choice of the reciprocal license that we have. Everybody should have to contribute the changes so that in the community, you can look at that and go, you know, that person did that. They didn't, were not able to just take the code and run away with it. Um, the .NET Foundation is the one organization that, technically speaking, could close the code, run away with it, and make more changes to it. Nobody else has that privilege. Nobody else has that right. That is their right as copyright holders. Um, and I trusted them <laughs> with that right before and was willing to continue to contribute to the project where they held that complete and total control over the source code and what it could be done um, I was comfortable with that. And what they've done in the last month, especially over the last week, two weeks, is betray a whole lot of trust very rapidly after neglecting us for many years. 
Um, so it's kind of all of that put together that you're like, maybe this working with the .NET Foundation is not the right way to go forward. And Or maybe they're going to come back and be like, okay, let's talk about it. Let's talk about what we're trying to accomplish. Let's talk about what is important to you, and we will figure out how to manage uh, the, the future, and we'll have that conversation. I don't – that has not happened yet. So uh, I wanted to hit this point. At this time, I wanted everybody else to be aware of where we're at with the Wix tool set um, and um, what I see as the next steps. We're not done. Uh, this conversation is not over. I'm, I'm hoping things get resolved well, um, and I will continue to spend time uh, trying to work towards a resolution where, honestly, the .NET Foundation and we are back into, you know, good terms, um, amicable terms, right? Because I didn't really have any issues, major issues before, other than, you know, being left alone sometimes more than that. It could have been better, but it wasn't. Uh, I didn't distrust them, I guess is the way I say it, which is what this really, in the end, all comes down to. A break of trust in an attempt to control more of the projects than they have ever asserted before. And the way that that has gone about is the issue. So that's where we're at right now. Um, if anything changes massively, then, and I think that another conversation like this is the easiest way to communicate it, because trying to get all of this through in text is challenging. I am working on a blog post right now to put on my personal website that essentially details everything I just went through here with the, the history, the story, and the actions and my understanding of the, my actions and the reactions I had to it just as a, a log of here's everything that happened the, it, from my point of view, right? The, the set of data points that I saw. Here they are, just so it's written down and other people can get it. Because I don't want the story getting twisted that that something, you know, people have done things maliciously. I don't know that's true. I don't want people getting twisted that I think Microsoft's trying to take over our project. I don't think that's true. I actually don't think that's true at all because Microsoft probably is. If I was to make a guess, I bet there are people there that are upset about what happened to the Foundation. I know that I am extremely I'm extremely upset that I'm involved in, in this after working so hard at Microsoft in my previous job to make open source happen. And now I'm part of this where they're just tearing down trust. It's, I, I don't, I don't know if that's irony. I don't know what the word is, but I'm not, it, it's not a good situation. So, Things people want to talk about. We don't have to. I usually have to fill space here while people think, because you know, I know there's always a delay and it goes out from us back. Um, so we don't have to. Um, we will uh, go. Uh, we'll, like I said, I don't. We'll have a meeting. Uh, we'll have a meeting in two weeks. I think that lines up because Sean did an excellent job of calculating the future for us and shifted us on to Thursdays that don't collide with holidays, for, at least for the foreseeable future. So that means that we'll be back in October 22nd. Uh, Erico DE. Yeah, no, send that somewhere else because that's not a Wix thing. That's a Fire Giant thing. Um, we'd happy be to talk about it. Um, we haven't done a lot with it since the initial release. There's lots of things we could do to it. Sorry, I'm not talking about that here. Let's go talk about somewhere else. It's not Wix. It's fine. Um, uh, two weeks from now, we'll be back. Two weeks uh, from now, same time, same place. Unless there's anything else anybody wants to talk about, I'm holding out. Um, two weeks is the 21st, not the 22nd. Did I say just 22nd? Oh. Yeah, your 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 calendar math is is pretty yeah. bad at the moment. I, I I can I can demonstrate my failure at this often. <laughs> <laughs> it only gets really bad when I try to book airplane tickets. That's where I really have to be careful. You can imagine how yeah, bad you, that could be. You, you probably shouldn't shouldn't be doing that. Um, uh, inside baseball, fire giant. Um, I I sometimes go and visit customers. Um, flying, I've flown around the world to visit customers. Um, one of the deals I made with my co-founder 
um, when he asked me if it would be okay for me to travel, which I said, yes, I'd be, I love going and meeting customers. Um, not all the time. I don't want to travel all the time, but twice a year is kind of where we were at before the pandemic. Um, I said, I'd be happy to travel. He's like, good. I think that would be really good for us for you to be able to do that. I'm like, yes, but and he's like, but I was like, but you have to book the travel. <laughs> and he's like, okay, I guess I can do that. Why? I'm like, because I will end up not getting there or not getting home on time. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, okay. And so uh, it, that has that is the one agreement I think that's in our um, thing up front. Um, Kirk books Rob's travel when going elsewhere until the day we get big enough and we have someone that does that for us maybe, but we're not that big to need that. Um, so yeah, um, we'll be back October 21st. Listen to Bob. He knows what he's talking about. Uh, 9.30. Uh, same place, uh, same time, all that kind of good stuff. I'll have updates. And if anything um, extreme shows up and I feel like we need to you know, talk again, we'll do that. Um, I'm really hoping it just kind of works itself out from here now that the people are aware of the challenges. So uh, we're up to date. Triage is up to date. We are ready for another couple weeks of hopefully getting work done uh, with minimal distractions. And we'll be back on the 21st. Until then, all of you, uh, have a good time. Take it easy. Uh, we're all busy. Have a good time. Bye. Bye. Bye.